Hey guys, Keir from Kegland, and today we're talking about oxygenation or aeration and when you need to use that for your beers and which styles of beers you need to use them. On the website, we've had these two sold for a little while. We've had basically this one here, which is our little air pump. It's like an aquarium pump, essentially. Um, and then we've also got this one which here, which is pure oxygen. So depending on your beer style or if you're doing a lager or a strong beer, you may need one of these. So let's go into this in a little bit more detail. So if you're new to home brewing, probably one thing you don't realize is that you need a lot of oxygen so you can basically build up that population of yeast cells inside your fermenter. That's a really important part of the fermentation process. A lot of us talk about how important it is to keep oxygen off the beer later on once we've started to chill it. But of course, in that beginning, the aerobic stage of the fermentation process where it's consuming air because we want to build up that population of yeast and because of that you know, certain beers will require a bigger population of yeast to get the job done but if it runs out of oxygen that population of yeast can't grow anymore so it's similar with nutrient as well if it runs out of nutrient also can't grow anymore too so oxygen is extremely important in that first stage I remember when I first started home brewing somebody sold me some sodium metabisulfite and said oh use this as a sanitizer and don't do that um, but I used it as a sanitizer and that did the exact opposite so I had some left over sanitizer on the inside walls of the fermenter and that stuff strips the oxygen out of the wort so I pitched yeast and always wondered why I got a sluggish fermentation. Anyway, that was many moons ago. I'm sure you guys don't do that anymore, but oxygen is really important. So if you've got nothing else, one thing you can do is just shake the fermenter really, really hard. And some of that, uh, you know, that, that, that headspace or air inside the headspace will basically, some of that oxygen will dissolve into solution and go into the liquid. Um, definitely if you've all grain brewed, you've boiled the liquid, that's even worse because, you know, because it's been boiled, well, it's good because you've boiled the liquid, you know, it's uh, completely sanitary and all that water's been boiled and it's fantastic. But one thing is during the boiling process, Process or even heating of any of that wort, you're driving off the oxygen. Or if you're adding boiling water from a kettle, same thing. You basically, as soon as you heat water up, you're driving all the oxygen out of liquid, you've got to get it back in there. So shaking's one way. If you've got a drill mixer, put it into your wort when you're first getting fermenting, and then that will also help oxygen dissolve into solution as well. But if you want a little bit more assistance, we've got these two products here, which I'll get into. So let's say if you want the bee's knees oxygen solution, really pure oxygen will give you the ability to get to those really high levels of oxygen you'll need for high gravity worts or doing lagers really well and stuff like that. But uh, some of you, if you want to uh, save a bit of money, you can also use this cheaper kit. So um, yeah, I'll explain the difference. Firstly, when you buy this cheaper little kit, it's like a little aquarium pump. Uh, some aquarium pumps simply won't work, I'll say. This particular type of aquarium pump uh, is slightly higher pressure than your standard ones, or if you're ever buying one or wondering if your aquarium pump's okay at home, you gotta make sure it's a deep water aquarium pump. So basically you can push a little bit more pressure because you need a bit of pressure to go through the, the, the stone itself. So um, yeah, that's one thing. When you take the, 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 the beer line or the uh, gas line out of the, uh, the box here, it's gonna come coiled up. I've already uncoiled this previously, so it's sort of fairly straight, but if you find it's a really tight coil, you need to straighten it, what you can do is just basically uh, get a bowl, a ceramic bowl, put it in the bowl, put hot water on it, and then you just pull it straight like that, and you'll say it'll stay straight, and that'll get the you know tight coils out of it, otherwise you'll have this sort of like coily ring. Um, so that's one thing. Once you've got it together, you can basically put it together like this. The filter, you just want somewhere in line here. So this filter's pretty important, because obviously we're sucking pure air. We're going into, you know, wort, which is ready to pitch. Last thing you want to do is blow, you know, ambient microbial activity in the air into the fermenter for, you know, a couple of minutes. Now, with air, the maximum you're going to get to is eight parts per million. So that's that's pretty good for some, you know, 5% alcohol type beers or something. Basically, where you're sit sitting around about the 1060 um, gravity or 1.060, you know, gravity, that's where you're sort of going to be able to get away with just ambient air. But if you start really creeping up, you know, higher than that, look, oxygen is really fantastic. But you really want to make sure that you're, you're doing strong beers or anything, you want to get as much oxygen as there in there as possible. The one benefit about using just something like this is that you can't overdo it. You literally can leave this in for one minute and you'll probably get to pretty close to saturation, but if you left it in there for you know 10 minutes or 20 minutes, it'd be fine too, because it's never gonna get above that eight, eight PPM um, of saturation point. So if you've got one like this, um, just basically plug it in like that. Um, obviously it needs power, so you plug it into a power point like this, and you'll hear it just makes that sort of slight humming, humming sound in the background there. And you can see I've just got this uh, 
container here. So if I had that uh, stone, I'd stick this in my fermenter. I'd have to sanitize this first. One really good way to sanitize actually, if you're using these stones, is to get a bit of tin foil. And before you have this plugged into uh, you know, your, your line here, you can actually have this wrapped up in tin foil and boil the whole thing. Obviously, if you've got it, uh, got, got it, an autoclave maybe at home, maybe uh, then you can put the whole thing in an autoclave. You can't put the beer line in the, in the or the gas line in the autoclave, but you can put the stainless steel stone in the autoclave. So you can take that off, autoclave it, and then push it back onto the end of the tube, and that would give you a 100% sanitary uh, fitting. Another thing you do is use like alcohol spray. Look, I love the ethanol spray because ethanol is highly effective. Spray it down or immerse it in a little like shot glass of ethanol. That'll also do the job pretty well. Same thing with the beer line. You want to make sure you cover all that. You can also use the Stella Sand sanitizer as well. Anyway, once you've done that, you stick it into the fermenter. And as you can see, the bubbles are just pouring up there. You want to get it down sort of as low as possible. Try to get to the bottom of the fermenter like that. You can see all the bubbles just sort of coming up. So that will do a great job for those sort of, you know, mid-range beers, mid-strengths. You can either do shaking or you can use this method and, you know, you're going to be, you're going to be pretty happy. Um, now I'll take that out and I'll show you the next option, which is pure oxygen. So if you're doing those strong beers, like let's say you're doing like a, um, uh, you're doing like a double bock or you're doing like a imperial stout, really it's it's hard to beat pure oxygen to really get the job done. Or if you're trying to make really, really clean, crisp lagers, this is really not such a bad idea. Lagers in particular, they're often a category, category gets forgotten about a little bit, but lagers, uh, people think of oxygen just for strong beers, but lagers are one of those ones where you still need a really large population of yeast cells, you want to keep those yeast cells happy. And if you're fermenting the lager pretty cool, then that puts even you know, more pressure on that whole fermentation process. You really got to get that population up as big as possible. Um, so what we're going to do with this one, we've got this uh, regulator. Obviously, it's a you know, higher pressure cylinder here. So basically, you've got to regulate it down to something which is usable. Um, so first screw on this guy on here like that, making sure that the regulator knob is undone. Now, oxygen is a bit dangerous. I've got to be honest with you. Like one thing you want to keep away from regulators in particular, and especially on the high pressure side, look, anywhere to be honest with you, but especially on the high pressure side, oil, you don't want any oil getting anywhere near that high pressure side because you mix oil or a hydrocarbon with oxygen, you know, highly combustible. So, you know, you definitely want to stay away from that type of situation. Then we've got the flow meter in this kit here. So that just sort of pushes on, on there like that. Now the flow meter, ideally you want to stay, stay quite vertical like this. So see, I've got the flow meter just facing upwards because I've got a ball in there showing me uh, basically how much flow I'm getting through the wand. Now, I really love these wands. Ergonomically, this, that, look, this kit's cheaper for sure. If you go for this kit, it comes with a stainless steel wand and it, you've got the stone on the end of the wand. So I like this for a few reasons. Firstly, because the long length of the wand, it's easier to sanitize. I can stick that, for instance, in my kettle or boil the end really easily. And it can boil or even the bruzilla. I can boil it in the bruzilla or something like that and make sure the whole thing's sanitized. You can also e more easily disconnect this uh, the stone as well. So see how it's like on a uh, on a threaded MFL thread there. So it's easy to disconnect if you wanted to, you know, clean that separately. I sometimes actually put my stone in hydrochloric acid to really give it a good clean. But you, look, some people just clean it in the dishwasher. One thing that really blocks up the pores as well is if you're, um, you know, handling it with your fingers, got oil in your fingers, gets in the head of the stone. So you definitely want to avoid that. But anyway, once you've got that together like this, um, it doesn't need to be like mega tight, like literally finger tight. Look, if I had a pair of span a spanner with me, I'd probably just tighten it up slightly more, but it doesn't have to be like crazy tight. And then what you do is you want to get this up to about one liter per minute on the regulator. So what I do is I just twist this regulator knob like that. And yeah, you just twist it up like this and you'll see that ball starting to increase in a second. Whoop, a bit too much there. Something like that. And once you've got one liter a minute, you basically just get that air stone underneath the liquid like that and you can see the bubbles coming up. So as you can see, a lot more ergonomic rather than trying to you know, get a flexible bit of tube and push it down or whatever. It's, I find this one really works, uh, works fantastic. Um, so that's it like that. So you probably you want, uh, let me just set this one here. It's got this knob on the front, so you make sure to make sure this one's undone too, uh, just, just so you're aware. Um, but yeah, get the flow rate up to about here. What you don't want to see is like a, a lot of excessive bubbles on the top. So what you want to see is the bubbles, we're trying to get that gas to dissolve in solution. If we're sort of seeing this, and I'm going to give it way too much now. 
So if we're gonna get, gonna, if I'm gonna go like this, where it's just erupting, honestly, that oxygen is just coming out and going to atmosphere. It's not really helping me much at all. So you're better off just going a little bit slower. And then what you wanna do is make sure that most of it dissolves into, into solution. So that's something that you wanna keep an eye on so you're getting the best use. Now, if you're doing that, being careful, not wasting too much. We're literally talking about, you know, maybe 60 seconds. If you've got a beer, which sort of fairly strong, um, you know, between 1060 up to, you know, 1.1 gravity. Uh, and if you've got a beer which is, let's say, over 1.1, really you've got to give it even more oxygen. Again, you probably want to do this twice. So give it a crack for a couple of minutes, uh, basically, um, and then come back, let's say, 12 hours or 24 hours later, ideally like 12 hours later, and give it another two minute hit as well, um, just at that approximately one liter per minute range. So that's how to get really great high strength beers or you know, really good lagers that taste fantastic and a really simple bit of kit to put together and use. In a nutshell, if you're trying to get up to like eight parts per million and get away without using any uh, oxygen, then this kit will do you up to about 1060 gravity, that's fine. But if you really wanna get into doing really good lagers and pilsners, which is extremely clean tasting, or those high gravity beers, really you can't get away with oxygen because it's the only way you're gonna get above eight parts per million eight parts per million. So if you wanna get like 10, uh, you know, like 12 parts or 14 parts per million for those really strong beers, this is absolutely necessary. A couple other small tips I'm gonna throw in there. When you're doing up the regulator, just make sure it's not too tight. A lot of people go crazy, you know, gorilla tight on this. I've actually seen some people go so tight that there's a little seal under here, starts pressing that seal flat and it actually blocks the hole up and they think there's no oxygen getting into the regulator. So it has happened before. Another little small thing I'll say is like, if you wanna save yourself a little bit of extra oxygen, you can also try to cool the wort down a little bit more. So the colder the wort is, uh, within reason, um, you know, the more oxygen will dissolve into solution. So, you know, if you got like hot wort, like 10, you know, if you're 30 degrees Celsius or something like that, don't even bother. Wait till you got a little bit cooler, then oxygen, oxygenate and then pitch your yeast on top at that stage. So that's really important. Um, that's pretty much it. If you guys have any other questions, put them in the comments below. I'll try to reply to them as soon as I get a chance to. And sign up, sign up to the group. There's heaps of other home brewers which are on our homebrew community group. Just search Kegland Homebrew Community Group on Facebook. You can join all the uh, other home brewers having a discussion there. And subscribe now, bottom right hand corner, hit subscribe so when we bring out all this cool new stuff, you hear about it straight away. All right, thanks, see ya.